What's up, Lore Masters? If you want to take lore to the next level, don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe button. If you haven't seen part one, click the box in the top right as that will be vital before continuing this episode. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. Last time we left the scenario, the Romulans had invaded the Federation. The paltry defenses Starfleet had would be forced to retreat, and the reinforcements that were again at the Cardassian and Bajoran borders respectively would be making the long trek across the Federation space back to the Romulan border. The Federation would be reeling from the attack. This is consistent with just about every war that has ever happened to the Federation. As I have stated numerous times, I do believe that the Romulans knew they couldn't win an all-out war with the Federation at this point. The name of the game would be to stall Starfleet by any means necessary in order to apply ever-increasing political pressure on the Federation. They would have a lot of ammunition due to the discovery of In the Pell Moonlight's events. Ultimately, this war would have one main target in mind, a reunification of Vulcan and bringing them into Romulan territory. The Romulans had been clamoring for reunification since before the formation of the Federation. With this goal in mind, two things would occur. First, they would move several task forces using cloaking technology deeper into Federation territory, specifically towards the heart of the Federation. They would then move the bulk of their fleet to attack and take Vulcan. The forces that had stayed near the Cardassian Union would continue to strike at Federation forces, keeping an, albeit small, focus on that front for the Federation. Starfleet's forces would be split and forced to fight on three different fronts. With the bulk of Starfleet forces returning, this would mean that the advanced technology would all but nullify the cloak when they arrived. The battles would stall for the Romulans, and indeed the Romulans would surely be forced back. The Romulan Star Empire would begin to reinforce the Vulcan sector and entrench along a line of defense from Vulcan to Kittimer. As I stated before, an old war-weary enemy would come to assist the Federation. While I think many might disagree with this, I believe that, at this point, the remnants of the Cardassian military would gladly offer to assist Starfleet at the Cardassian border. Garrick, offering the services of the Cardassian Union, would be able to assist in completely defeating the Romulan forces at the border. This would ultimately assist the Union in future negotiations with the Federation. With the Romulans defeated at the Federation-Cardassian border, even more Starfleet resources would be pulled to the front lines. In my last video, I stated that the Klingon Empire would begin hit-and-run operations but be in absolutely no position to really fight the Romulan Empire. And while I still stand by that, many of the audience have made compelling arguments that the Klingons, regardless of whether they are in a position or not, would commit their forces fully against the Romulans, even if the Federation had been dishonorable during the war. I think I'm now convinced that this would be the case. After initially instigating hit-and-run attacks, the Klingons would then push into the Romulans with all their forces. These actions would be something the Romulans could resist against, but unable to completely repel, thus putting a strain on Romulan forces. Additionally, as we discussed last video, the Romulans would also find themselves to be at a disadvantage with espionage. Section 31 would be creating all kinds of havoc, which would include problems with their supply lines, ship repairs, and other issues. Additionally, the tactics of the Romulan Black Ops would be all but known to Starfleet intelligence with the established mole in their ranks. At this point, I truly believe the Romulans would move for a stalemate, holding Benzite and Vulcan and just entrenching themselves. They would make it clear that the more moves the Federation did to retake Vulcan would ultimately result in accidents that would occur that would hurt more civilians. While Starfleet attempted to find a way around this, the Federation would move for peace and the Romulans would agree to a cessation of violence. The Romulans would demand four things up front. A large swath of the Cardassian Union for the Cardassian's attack on Romulan ships, Benzite, Vulcan, and a new established border pushing the Federation back. In return, they would be happy to consider the Treaty of Algernon defunct and allow Federation ships to engage in utilizing cloaked ships. This would, of course, be rejected outright. The Federation would counter that the Romulans would lose all territories, save for Benzite, which had already been under Romulan control post-Dominion War, and that the Romulans could return to their former borders. But the Romulans would counter. However, they'd be willing to relent on most things. They would drop any claims to the Cardassian Union, the Federation could have Benzite and most all of its territories back. But Vulcan would stay under Romulan control. This would make most of the Federation scoff, but they might possibly offer for the Romulans to have a presence on Vulcan, and, assuming the Vulcans agreed, to discuss a reunification of the Romulan-Vulcan societies. Now, how does this end? I'm not sure. So let's do this. Let's discuss it tonight on the Geek Breakdown. You bring the popcorn, I'll bring the drinks and dialogue.
and I'll see you guys on the next Lore Reloaded.